The Architecture Components Lifecycle Library is designed to help you solve common Android lifecycle problems and to make your apps more maintainable and testable. This is an introduction to ViewModel. A ViewModel holds your app's UI data in a lifecycle conscious way that also survives configuration changes. Now, here's a real world example of why that might actually be useful. Rotating your phone is considered a configuration change. Configuration changes cause your whole activity to get torn down and then recreated. If you don't properly save and restore data from the destroyed activity, you may lose data and end up with weird bugs or even crashes like this. Yeah, that's no good. So enter the view model, which survives configuration changes. Instead of storing all of your UI data in the activity, put it in the view model instead. Now this does help with configuration changes, but it's also just good software design. One common pitfall when developing for Android is to put a lot of variables, logic, data, and other things in your activities or fragments. And what this does is it creates a large unmaintainable mess of a class and it violates the single responsibility principle. You can use view models to easily define up that responsibility. View models will hold all of the UI data for an activity. Then the activity is only responsible for knowing how to draw that data on the screen and for receiving user interactions, but it doesn't actually have to process them. If your app loads and stores a lot of data, I also suggest making a repository class as described in the guide to Android architecture. Now you should make sure that your view models don't become bloated like your activities and fragments were. To avoid this, you can create presenter classes or you can implement a more fully fledged clean architecture. There's tons of documentation linked. Okay, so let's actually make a view model. To make a view model, you extend the view model class and then you put all of your UI related instance variables that were previously in your activity into your view model. You should encapsulate these variables by providing getter methods. Okay, now in your activities on create, you get the view model from a framework utility class called view model provider. Notice the view model provider takes an activity instance. This is the mechanism that allows you to rotate the phone, get a technically new activity instance, but ensure that that instance is always associated with the same view model. With the view model instance, you can use the getters to access the UI data from your activity. Documentation is linked. Now, you may want to modify the default constructor of your view model, which currently takes no parameters. You can get around this by using the default constructor and then immediately calling a set method with a parameter that you want to pass in. Alternatively, you can use the view model factory class to create a custom constructor. Documentation is linked. Now, as a warning, you should never pass context into view models. So this means no passing in fragments, activities, or views. View models don't care about specific life cycles of a single activity or fragment, which can be destroyed or recreated many times during the life cycle of that view model. So let's say that you accidentally do pass in an activity to the view model. When you rotate the screen and the activity is destroyed, you now have a view model that's holding a reference to a useless destroyed activity. And this is a memory leak. Now, if on the other hand, you find yourself needing an application context, you can use the Android view model subclass. This includes a reference to the application for you to use. Okay, one more warning. View models are not a replacement for on save instant state. Now, as I said, view models survive configuration changes, but that doesn't mean that they survive a process related shutdown due to resource restrictions. So make sure to use your view models to store as much UI data as possible so that you don't need to reload or regenerate uh, that data during a configuration change. On save instant state, on the other hand, is meant to store the smallest amount of data that you need to actually restore a UI state if your process is shut down by the framework. So for example, you might use on save instant state to store the ID, database ID for an object instead of storing the full object. Documentation is linked. Okay, I'm gonna finish off with two more view model facts. You can use view models to share data between different fragments in an activity. And this removes the need to have the fragments reference each other or to have them communicate through the parent activity. Documentation is linked. Now view models could also be uh, used to create reactive UIs using another architecture component class called live data. Live data can be stored inside of view models and then can automatically notify linked fragments or activities when it's updated. To learn more about live data, watch the introduction. So hopefully this has inspired you to try out the new view model class in your own apps. To learn more about view models or any of the information I mentioned, check out the documentation, which of course is linked below.